I'll, I'll, I'll do the quick job here. So I'm, I'm talking about a really happy topic, failure, failure. So I had a startup for 15 months, we were a consumer-facing business called Apprezi, and bootstrapped it over that period to about 10,000 monthly users, but ultimately we had to shut it down. So when I talk about failing, I'm not talking about failing fast, I'm talking about putting a bullet in it, a real failure. And throughout this process, we tried really hard to follow the learnings and teachings of these two scrappy guys from out in Silicon Valley. I'm talking about Eric Reese and Steve Blank. So we got out of the building, and we learned, and we built, and we tested, and we iterated, and we pivoted, but ultimately, it didn't stop the sky from falling on our head. There's a lot of different reasons why that was the case. Partially, our market got really profitable. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to do today was talk about some of the things that I would do differently next time around. Now, one of those things next time is I would focus on revenue a whole lot earlier than I did. I have this hypothesis. I'm not dogmatic about this for every startup, but I have a hypothesis that investors in New York care about clear morality or a clear line to revenue. And unfortunately, I focused on engagement. I thought that's the biggest risk that my company had. With this new product, will people really enjoy it? Will they can engage with it? And that was a big risk. And we had really good engagement numbers. But the biggest risk of funding was revenue. Another thing that I would do differently next time around is do a lot more prep work before I started. See, I'm a dad. I've got two kids. And I really only had about 12 months to get this thing off the ground properly. And so we got excited about this product, we got excited about initial validation, and Liz and I, my co-founder, we jumped right in. But next time around, I need to get a lot more of that learning done ahead of time so that when I start the clock, I can really move back. What else do I want to do better next time? One of the things I want to do is move deeper into the stack in terms of what I can touch with the product. Now, I don't know if I had been programming in JavaScript and Ruby on Rails, whether that would have changed the outcome. It would have helped us move fast, but wouldn't have changed it. Oh, sure. You know, I did the design, the business, and went down to the CSS. But it's just a no-brainer that the more you can help move and keep the product fast, keep the product flexible, uh, the better you're going to be as a startup. Now, we tackled a very big technical problem with just two of us and one technical co-founder, which is kind of lunatic, actually, in retrospect. And we were pulling in help from our friends, but it was a little bit crazy. So next time around, if I'm going to be doing something difficult, I know that I just I have to have a bigger team before I get going, given the time that we had. You know, if, if our first idea had been the right idea, it would have been great. But we pivoted three times. We didn't have time to, to get all the stuff done that we needed to get far. Venture capitalists. Ah, oh, yes. I'm not going to pitch venture capitalists until I have clear results that I think they're going to care about. Brainstorming with investors, that's all fine and good. But when you're pitching, you actually can't be out in the market that long. They don't care about learnings, they don't care about lean, they just care about results. Right? The West Coast bloggers talk about, oh, share your learnings. Right? I had that slide in my deck. It's probably the one they ignore the fastest. You know? So uh, it, it doesn't go over well. Results go over well. The last thing that I knew, I knew this before, you know, it's consulting. Consulting and startups do not go well together unless you're 37 seconds and have magical alignment. But the specter of death was looming over our foreheads and we wanted to keep on going. But the trouble with consulting is that your multitasking, your context switching, and your momentum, and your productivity starts to die. And everything gets stretched out so far and it's just redundant. So I'm not going to bother with it next time, even though it's a little pain we want to do. Analytics is one of those things that I'm just not sure of. I focused most of my efforts on getting out of the building and really focusing on quality. Didn't do as much quantitative, we did basic engagements, but didn't do heavy A-B testing and that stuff. I don't know if that would have moved the needle. The qualitative gave us the biggest insight, so we didn't kill clients. I believe in that. I think it was right, but I do know that every project I do, I'm going to look very carefully about how I can use analytics effectively. Now, ultimately, I have no regrets of trying to be a lean startup as best and as hard as I possible. You know, a startup is a race against time. It is a race to build value as quickly as possible. I've done six of these, but I'm trying to get smarter about when and how I start and when I stop. And uh, ultimately, this race I lost, but I'm better for it. And so if you want to ask me any more questions, that's how you can reach me, and thank you so much.